What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about the number one key to breakthrough. And this is something, you know, Christians talk about all the time. Oh, I just need a breakthrough or whatever. But really, we're going to talk about today the one thing that you need in order to live in continuous breakthrough. And so I want you to watch this till the end. I'm going to talk about at the end how this key that I'm giving you is actually what set me free from the spirit of fear um, and anxiety. It also set me free from insecurity. So this is probably the number one thing that has changed my life. And I believe that it's going to change your life also. And so I want to start off by reading to you a scripture out of Second Peter chapter 1. And really just the other week, I saw this scripture in a whole new way. Um, and it really just sums up so well, you know, what I experienced in my own life and what many of you may have experienced before that really is the is the number one thing that's going to cause you to have a breakthrough. So many Christians, you know, if you're you're in need of a change in your life or you're in need of a breakthrough, you're in need of a miracle, you know, many times people are looking on the outside for a breakthrough, for something to change in their life and then they'll say, "Wow, I've had a breakthrough" or whatever. But I want to I'm going to show you from this scripture that really a breakthrough is something that happens in your heart. Breakthrough happens in your heart. And when something happens in your heart, it's going to affect your life outwardly. But understand that breakthrough is not out here somewhere. It's not, you know, on the outside. Breakthrough is something that has to take place in your heart. It's a thing of the heart. It's not even a thing of your brain that you learn something that's going to that's gonna change your life. Yes, we have to learn things in our mind, but ultimately it's something that happens in your heart. And, and so this key is that I'm talking about, it's when the light, the revelation light of God's word comes in your heart, that, that is breakthrough. That is what causes breakthrough on the inside of you. And when that happens on the inside of you, it's going to affect your outward life. So I want to get right into it. Let's read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. So a little context here. Peter is talking about, um, he's recounting the story of when he saw Jesus. He had an encounter with God on the Mount of Transfiguration, and he heard the voice of God say, this is my beloved son. So Peter had this awesome encounter with the glory of God where he heard God's voice. And, you know, he's recounting to the church and when he's writing to them in his letter, he's telling them, hey, all, all, all these things that we're talking to you, these are not cleverly devised fables. You know, he's, he's rem recalling, reminding them of the encounter he had on the Mount of Transfiguration. And so let's read this. He says, and so the prophetic word is made more reliable and fully validated by the confirming voice of God on the Mount of Transfiguration. And so I want to pause here. When he says the prophetic word, what is he talking about? So Peter was a Jew. Uh, many of the church members, they were Jews that had come to believe in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So when, when Peter's talking here about the prophetic word, he's talking about all the Old Testament scriptures that they had, because they didn't have the New Testament yet, right? Peter is writing the New Testament. So they didn't have a New Testament. So the only scriptures they had were the Old Testament, and it was full of prophetic words or prophecies about the coming Messiah. It was, and so that's all they really had to go on. So Peter, you know, because he was a Jew, he knew the scriptures. He knew, you know, the Old Testament. He knew about the prophecies that, that spoke about the coming Messiah. He, he knew them. But what he says here, what he's explaining here is the prophetic word concerning Jesus, the, all these prophecies that he had known from his youth, he says they are made more reliable and fully validated by the confirming voice of God that he heard on the Mount of transfiguration. So when he was on that mountain and he beheld the glory of God and he heard the voice of God, those prophetic words, those scriptures that he knew from his youth, all of a sudden those scriptures came alive to him. They became real to him. They were confirmed to him by the voice of God. Okay. So um, it goes on to say, and he's telling the church, he's talking about his own experience right? That he had this awesome encounter. But then he tells the church, you will do well to pay close attention to it. Meaning the word, the prophetic word. You will do well to pay close attention to it as to a lamp shining in a dismal or dark place 
until the day breaks through the gloom and the morning star rises in your hearts. So Peter is telling them that they need to have this same confirmation that Peter had from the voice of God. They each need to experience on a personal level. And he tells them how he says, you will do well to pay close attention to it. So what is Peter saying? He's saying, you need to give attention to the word. Set your focus, set your mind, set your attention on, on the word as a lamp or a small light that is shining in a dark place. So he's talking about their hearts and right now, and that's what happens when you need a breakthrough, there may be an area of your life where you're experiencing darkness. It's like a dismal and dark place, right? But he says the word, and this could be the, the spoken preached word of God, like you're hearing right now, or it could be the written word, but he says, give attention to the word. Like it's a small lamp or like a piercing light in a dark place. So the word, you know, you may be hearing the word, you may be reading your Bible and it starts off as the small light that's piercing through in a dark place, right? But as you give attention to it, as you meditate on it, as you put your focus on it, he says to focus on it and to pay attention to it until, until day breaks through the gloom, that light breaks through. There's the word breakthrough. Until the light breaks through the darkness, until the day breaks through the gloom and the morning star rises in your hearts. So, you know, and this is what Peter's talking about. He already had, you know, this revelation had already risen in his heart. The morning star, which is Jesus himself. Jesus said in Revelation 22, he said, I am the bright and morning star. Jesus, the living word of God is the morning star. So Peter already had this revelation, but he was trying to explain to them, you need to give attention to the word and allow the voice of God to confirm it to you. And when that happens, he says that that's when light begins to break through. There's a dawning. What happens at dawn is that the sun, the light begins to break through the dark night, right? It begins to illuminate the earth. So he says, that until day breaks through the gloom and the morning star rises in your own heart, right? Peter already had it risen in his heart, but he was saying that they needed that morning star, that revelation light of Christ to rise in their own hearts. And this is breakthrough. This is the definition of breakthrough. You need a breakthrough in your life. It's not something out here somewhere. It's not that you need something to happen in your life. Whatever problem you're having is ultimately can be traced back to a lack of light, a lack of revelation, right? And, you know, Bishop David Oyedepo, if you know who that is, he has the largest church on the planet. Great man of God out of um, Lagos, Nigeria. I encourage you to look him up. But he says the only uh, mountain or problem that you have in your life is ignorance. Ignorance meaning lack of light, lack of revelation light in a certain area of your life. That's really the only problem that we can have as a believer, right? Because God has given us all things. The work is finished, right? We have access to resurrection power, resurrection life. We have access to all things through Christ. But really, it comes down to getting revelation light in that area of your life where maybe you're not seeing the power of God, you're not seeing that breakthrough that you wanna be seeing, it goes back to your light concerning that area of your life. For instance, if it's something in your health, right? It's all gonna go back to that revelation light that the word concerning your healing has to break through the darkness of your heart. That light has to begin to shine. That morning star needs to rise on the inside of you right? So that's, that's what everything goes back to is revelation light, revelation light. And so I want you to pay attention too to the fact that Peter talks about the voice of God. The voice of God is what confirmed the word to him and made his revelation break forth to where he got to a point where he said, no, I know that this is the son of God. It was no longer just a, a doctrine or something he was trying to believe or something he was maybe questioning. No, when he heard the voice of God say, this is my beloved son, every doubt was gone. Every fear was gone. Every questioning in his heart was gone, right? Because when light comes, it's no longer like you're trying to believe something. It's not like you're trying to, to, to hope and you know, whatever. No, when light comes, you can see it clearly and whatever you can see clearly, you know, as a fact, 
So if you're, if you know, if you're still questioning and dealing with doubt, it's just because you haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen the light yet. You haven't been illuminated in whatever area of your life, you know, that you're struggling in. There needs to be light in that area. So understand that Peter, Peter makes a correlation here that it's the voice of God that causes the small light to break forth and to rise in your heart. And so I want to talk about this a little bit more in detail. So the Holy Spirit is actually the voice of God. The Holy Spirit is the voice of God. And so I can prove this to you. Um, you know, I'm not going to get super deep into it, but in Genesis 1, right, when God was creating the earth, the Bible says that the, the Spirit of the Lord was hovering on the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And light was. And let me tell you, this is in Genesis 1. That right there, there is so much powerful revelation that you could just get out of that. But what I want you to catch is the part where I said the spirit of the Lord was hovering upon the face of the waters. And so the waters are a type of the word. And all throughout scripture, you can see that the, the, you know, in Ephesians, it talks about the washing of the water of the word. The word is likened unto water. So when it says the spirit of the Lord was hovering on the face of the water, you can take that as the spirit of the Lord is hovering on the face of the word. So when you're reading your Bible, the Holy Spirit is always hovering. He's right there. The Holy Spirit works with the word to reveal it to you. And we talked about this a little bit on my last uh, podcast last week. The Holy Spirit is, is the one that's going to reveal the word to you, right? The, the, the Spirit of the Lord is hovering upon the face of the waters. And then it also says in Psalms, there is the same scripture but it says instead of the spirit of the Lord, it says the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. So as you're reading your Bible or as you're listening to the word of God, like you're doing right now or listening to a preached sermon or whatever, right there, right upon the word is the voice of God. The spirit of God comes to confirm the word, to reveal the word, to make light break forth, right? So the spirit of God is the voice of God. So when you are giving attention to the word, like we talked about, he said, you do well to pay attention, close attention to the word of God, whether written or spoken, and, and you begin to engage the Holy Spirit, right? He's going to confirm that word. He's going to cause that small light that you're focusing on. You know, it's a piercing light in a dark place. He's going to take that light and make it break forth. He's going to make that light flood your heart, right? And that's what gives you breakthrough. And that's when you can see clearly. It's no longer, I'm trying to believe, I'm trying to have faith. No, you can see clearly the truth. You can see Christ clearly. And that is what brings about a mighty breakthrough in your life. And the Bible says in Isaiah 60, it says, for arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. When your light comes, when light comes in, people will see the glory of God upon your life. It's an inward work, but it has an outward manifestation. So breakthrough, it's an inward breaking forth of light, but it has an outward transformation where people will see clearly the glory of God upon your life. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So the glory of God will begin to be seen on you when that light breaks forth. And so I want to, I want to just and force it even further. If you read in Ephesians chapter one, many people know this scripture, you know, where Paul prayed for the church. The main thing that Paul prayed for the church is, is that they, that the eyes of their hearts would be flooded with light. Same thing that Peter was talking about. That is, you are giving attention to the word as you're hearing the word preached, as you're reading the word, all of these things. Paul prayed for the church that the eyes of your heart, that that small light would break forth and flood your heart, that it would flood your heart, right? That that, that dawning, that breaking forth of the light of God, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be flooded with light so that you can know, not that you can try to believe, not that you can hope, not that you can just be trying to muster up faith. No, that you can know the hope of your calling and the inheritance that he has in the saints. There's a knowing that comes with light. All questioning leaves, fear leaves, doubt leaves, and you know. 
you are confident in what God has said. It becomes real to you, right? And we talked about that too on one of my podcasts, that the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, he comes and he makes the word real to you. It's not just something you read in a book somewhere. It's your reality because you can see it by light, by revelation light, you can see clearly. I'm free. You can see clearly. I'm healed. You can see clearly. I have the victory, right? And that's really what brings about your outward breakthrough. And so I want to also read to you uh, out of John chapter one, very powerful scripture. Um, John one, why is light, another reason that light is so important. And I may even do another podcast on this because I have so much to say about it. Um, And I want to share with you about how this affected my own life when it comes to fear and anxiety. But quickly, I'll just read you this last scripture. It says in John 1, 5, it says, and light shines in darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. So why is light so powerful is when light comes in, darkness goes out. There's no battle. There's no struggle. It's immediate. And think about it. When you walk into a dark room, if you flip the light switch on, there's no battle between light and darkness. Immediately, light swallows up darkness. When light comes in, darkness goes out. The Bible says that darkness cannot even comprehend the light of Christ. So when you receive revelation light concerning a certain area of your life, there's no more struggle. There's no more battle. There's no more contending. The, it is over. When light comes in, darkness moves out. It's, it's not a battle. It's immediate. And now I want you to think about the speed of light. You know how fast the speed of light is? I can't remember, but I learned it in physics one time, but it's very fast. The speed of light is basically immediate. And God created light so that you could understand the power of revelation of the word. Light is a reflection of a spiritual reality. Understand that. So when, when you understand the speed of light, that's how fast, when you receive revelation light from the word of God, that's how fast your victory will manifest. The speed of light. So I want to talk to you about, you know, how this worked in my own life. Obviously, I've been sharing you some deep things out of the word of God. But, you know, in my own life, this is what set me free from fear and anxiety. Um, because I, you know, I was very insecure, very bound up by fear. Um, and I had a season of my life where I just remember the Lord speaking to me that it was a season to press in, that I was really supposed to just press in, seek the Lord. And so what I did was I started reading my Bible a lot. I was actually living in Baton Rouge for the whole summer by myself. So I had a lot of time. It was a special season in my life where I had a lot of time to devote to the word of God. But even more than reading my Bible, I spent hours a day listening to the preached word of God. I was listening to the word, reading the word, and I was also spending time praying, praying in tongues, praying in the spirit, right? So I was like Peter said, going back to that scripture we read at the beginning, I was paying close attention to the word, close attention. And this is where people miss it because everything is pulling for your attention. The busyness, the cares of life, your phone, the TV, your family, your friends, everything is pulling for your attention, which is why I want to hone in on this is the key that Peter gave for your breakthrough, for the breaking forth of light. This is the key paying close attention to the word. And so when I had this season where I was listening to the word, I was feeding myself with the word constantly. Let me tell you, there was so much light breaking forth in my heart. I mean, it was like God took a flashlight and illuminated my whole life. All of a sudden things I had never, which felt like I had never even known or seen before, all of a sudden, I could see it clearly. I could see my redemption clearly. I could see clearly from the word that I didn't have to fear getting sick and dying early. I began to see in the word that God promised me a long life, that he promised me health and strength. I realized from the word that I didn't have to fear um, living a, a miserable life. I began to see in the word that God was a rewarder of those who seeked him. I began to see in the word that I didn't have to fear what was gonna happen to me going to certain places. I began to see the light of God's word concerning divine protection began to flood my heart. And what was happening was all of these things, as the word was coming in me, that morning star was rising in my heart. That light began to flood my heart. And like I said, when light comes in, darkness goes out. There's no battle. There's no contention. There's no speed warfare tongues. No, when light comes in, darkness moves out. 
So before you know it, you know, I, it had been a few months before you know it. I, over the course of two to three months, every trace of fear was gone from my life. Every trace of anxiety gone from my life. Every trace of insecurity gone from my life. I was so bold. I was so confident in who I was in Christ. I was no longer ashamed to be a Christian living a set apart life. I was bold. I was filled with the fire of God. Why? Because that morning star had risen in my heart. That reality of God had risen on the inside of me and that light had driven out every form of darkness. I never tried to get free from fear. I never tried to get free from insecurity. I never took a, took a class on three steps to overcoming anxiety. I never had to get on medication uh, to, to make me, you know, my mind calm down. Never needed any of that. Why? Because when light comes in, darkness moves out. Fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit of darkness. Those thoughts that plague your mind let me tell you, that is a demonic spirit. That is darkness. And the reason that those thoughts are there is because you are living in darkness. You have not yet seen the light. You have not yet seen the reality of your redemption. So what do you do? You pay close attention to the word. You begin to turn your attention to the word. And even as you're listening to this, God has to confirm whatever is preached to you, God will confirm in your life. So even as you're listening to this, as I'm telling you this, you can expect God is going to confirm what I'm saying in your life. As you begin to pay attention to the word, I believe that the voice of God, the Holy Spirit is going to begin to enlighten you. He's going to begin to confirm that word. He's going to begin to cause this small light. Maybe you're hearing what I'm saying and it's a small light to you. It's a lamp shining in a dark place, but I believe the voice of God is going to come and confirm it. The Holy Spirit's going to come and reveal it. He's going to cause that light to flood your heart. And I believe that as this light, the light of God's word continues to rise in your heart, it's going to drive out every form of darkness, no matter what area of your life. I believe that the light of God is driving out every form of darkness in your life in the mighty name of Jesus.